Today, we're gonna learn about the color yellow. Doesn't that sound exciting? Hello and welcome to Comic Misconceptions, the show that takes you into detail about the things you think you know about comics. I'm your host, Scott Nicewander, and we've done a lot of Yellow Lantern stuff over the past couple weeks on our other show, Behind the Frame, and I feel like it would be a complete waste if I didn't at least talk about the Yellow Lanterns on the comic book show. So the Yellow Lanterns, or Sinestro Corps as they're called, are like the anti-Green Lanterns. And like the GLs and their homeworld on Oa, the Sinestro Corps also has a homeworld of their own. Which leads into last week's trivia question, which was, where is the homeworld of the Sinestro Corps? Congrats to Jessica Moreau and many others who answered Quard. Nailed it. While we'll undoubtedly cover Sinestro's history in another episode, today I want to focus specifically on the Sinestro Corps itself. So all you really need to know is that Sinestro was banished by the Guardians to the Antimatter universe, where he met a race called the Weaponers living on a planet called Quard, and they hated the Guardians just as much or even more than Sinestro did. And so of course, naturally, they formed an alliance, and the Weaponers forged the first Yellow Lantern Ring, making Sinestro one of the most formidable opponents that a Green Lantern has ever faced. After going solo for a while, Sinestro realized that the best way to fight the Green Lantern Corps was to have a Yellow Lantern Corps, which he will call instead the Sinestro Corps. More on why later. Now, the Yellow Lantern Corps, much like any Lantern Corps, has had an interesting group of different alien races and members that are just fascinating to talk about. So here are some of my absolute favorites. Arkillo, who is like the Yellow Lantern version of Kilowog, only cooler to me personally. Ranx, who is a living city. I don't know how to pronounce this. Despotilis? The virus, a sentient virus. That's pretty freaking awesome. Then we have just characters that you may have heard of, like Mongol, Cyborg Superman, Scarecrow, before it was stolen by Lex Luthor, and even Batman. Now here's something that I find really awesome. There is also a predator in the Sinestro Corps. Yes. What? Awesome. It's unofficial, but it also appears that there's a xenomorph on the Sinestro core, which you can see here, and here, and here as well. There's a ton more awesome ones that I don't have time to go over, but here's a good question. How do the Yellow Lanterns differ from the Green Lanterns? From just seeing the kind of stuff that they do, it basically just appears that Green Lanterns and Yellow Lanterns can make the same constructs. They're just different colors, so how, how are they different? Well. Basically, the Green Lanterns are picked on their ability to overcome fear, and Yellow Lanterns are picked on their ability to instill fear in others. So, pretty opposite sides of the spectrum, uh, even though they're like right next to each other in the emotional and color spectrum. So you can see why the Green Lanterns and the Yellow Lanterns would have such a huge rivalry, but personally, if I was a Yellow Lantern, I would hate the Blue Lantern Corps more. See, Blue Lanterns have the ability to absorb and distill yellow light and supercharge green light. It's like Green Lanterns are Venusaur, Yellow Lanterns are Goldeen, and Blue Lanterns are Mega Drain. It's not gonna really work out. Now you may have heard that Green Lanterns are weak to the color yellow, this is kind of true. I wouldn't say it's a weakness like kryptonite to Superman, but it is definitely a limitation that they uh, couldn't control things that are yellow. Why is this limitation here? I am glad that I imagined you asked me. So each color has an entity that is an embodiment of that emotion. Red is the Butcher, orange is Ophidian, green is Ion, blue is Adara, indigo is Proselyte, violet is the Predator, hilariously enough, and yellow is Parallax. No, we do not talk about that. That is not Parallax. This is Parallax. Parallax was secretly imprisoned by the Guardians into the central battery on Oa, the central battery being the thing that gives Green Lanterns their power. So Parallax, the most powerful entity of fear, is living inside of the thing that gives Green Lanterns their power. It's like having a rat in your pantry. It's gonna mess with your food. Similarly, kind of, Parallax was able to put a small amount of control over the rings to make it so they are ineffective against anything that is the color yellow. Now you may remember me saying way back in the day that the original weakness of Green Lanterns was wood. This is one of those other crazy stories that we don't have time for today, but I will make a video about because it's bonkers. But that's why the Green Lanterns have had this weakness to yellow. So you can see the benefit of being on the Sinestro Corps fighting against the Green Lanterns, but 
why is it even called the Sinestro Core? I mean, it's the Green Lantern Core, why not just the Yellow Lantern Core? You might think it was Sinestro being vain and just naming the core after him, but it wasn't. In fact, we have none other to thank for the name of Sinestro Core than the time-traveling superhero himself, Booster Gold. I'll spare you all the crazy details, but all you need to know is that time screws up and Sinestro is known as the greatest Green Lantern of all time but he gets wind that Guy Gardner will surpass him of that role in the future, so he goes to Earth planning on getting rid of Guy Gardner. All because Sinestro wants to be the very best, like no one ever was. More Pokemon references. Booster Gold plays to Sinestro's ego and says that he comes from the future where everybody worships the great and powerful Sinestro. Now Booster Gold wears a yellow ring that gives him the ability of flight. Sinestro notices this ring and Booster Gold just says it's a tribute that everyone wears in the future to the great Sinestro. Sinestro then asks, what core is he from? Booster Gold kind of fumbles and says, uh, the Sinestro core? Then Sinestro does the typical villain thing, twirling his mustache at the idea of his own core. Oh, Booster Gold, how I love the way you mess with history. That's a guy for another episode, but I hope you guys learned a little bit more about the awesomeness that is the Sinestro Core. So here's my question for you guys this week. Forget about the existing Lantern Cores and tell me if you could create your own Lantern Core, what would it be? Let me know in the comments below. Mine would be plaid. But now we must move on to the weekly trivia challenge. So Thor comes out next week and I'm verily excited. I think, I don't know if that, if that was the correct usage of that word. So obviously we have to talk about Thor. So of course you know that Thor has a mortal alter ego called Donald Blake and whenever there was crime to be fought, he would turn into Thor and do that stuff and what have you. So this week's trivia question is, what did Donald Blake have to do in order to transform into Thor? If you know the answer or just wanna leave your best guess, you can do so in the comments below. If you are right, you can be featured on the show next week. So get started you guys on the Weekly Trivia Challenge! Yes, it's the end of an episode, but before we go, I want to address what you guys had to say in the comments of last week's episode about Moon Knight being Batman. You guys left some awesome stuff, and I wanted to just address it and put it in this episode because you guys are amazing. Timothy Outram says that Moon Knight sounds more like Red Hood than Batman because they both died and came back to life and are messed up in the head and don't mind killing people. I absolutely agree, this, this is a great point. Uh, maybe Moon Knight is even the uh, combination of Batman and Red Hood because he has all those qualities of Red Hood that you pointed out, but he's also incredibly wealthy like Batman and uses that wealth to fund uh, moon-themed weapons similar to how Batman would do bat-themed weapons, so great point. And for Mike Cunningham and Slagathor12 asking for the best Moon Knight comics to read, 02290 uh, came to the rescue and said that the best run is the 2006 Charlie Huston's run. Uh, I've only heard great things about it. It's great to see you guys helping each other out in the comments. You guys rock. I want to do more stuff like this in the future, so if you have a comment about today's episode, please leave it down below and we'll try to address it next time. But that's it for this episode of Comic Misconceptions. Please be sure to subscribe to NerdSync Productions here right here on YouTube if you haven't done so already. We have new episodes of this show every Wednesday and other shows as well. You can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter if you want, guys. I mean, I'm not going to be opposed to that. Do that, us, you and me, connecting on the internet, whatevs, do it. The point is, I'll see you right here next week for more things you thought you knew about comics. See ya. Of course you know that Thor has a mortal alter ego called da da da. Yep, that's his name, da da da. If you knew you, <laughs> yep.